First of all, what a wonderful performance by Frederick Chu. It's hands down the best recording I could find of this prelude. I actually prefer it over Prokofiev's rendition. This prelude is the seventh piece from his Opus 12, a set which was composed during Prokofiev's student years at the conservatory. There is also a very nice transcription for harp, hence also the nickname of this piece. Before we look at the compositional features, let's talk about the structure. Of course, this is a ternary form, but there is more to it. The piece is quite symmetrical in structure. In the A part, we have two sections in which the main theme is heard twice. Let's call these A1 and A2. After the A section, we have the middle B section. This B section itself has a ternary form with B1 being an E Phrygian, B2 a short glissandi intermezzo in C, followed by a repetition of the B1 section in E Phrygian again. The A section is then played again, but now the A2 part is heard first, followed by the A1 finalized with a short coda. Let's take a look at the compositional features of the A section. The key is C major. Throughout the composition, in the A sections, the accompaniment is actually in the high voice with the right hand. The melody is in the left hand, moving in parallel thirds. In bar 4, Prokofiev uses a pedal tone on C, on top of which we can distinguish other chords. For example, a third scale degree, a subdominant, the median again, and the second scale degree. Notice that the top note of the melody moves down a whole tone every time. Also here, from F to E flat. This chord is A flat major, and the next one is a B flat dominant 9 chord. I explained these chords as an inflection in E flat major, thus there is no modulation, certainly not given the quick tempo and the lack of an authentic cadence. There is also another way to look at this passage. A flat major is the 6th scale degree in C major, but the Moldur variant, with an altered 5th E flat, this is commonly known as borrowed harmony. The next chord has F in the bass, B flat and D can be viewed as coloring notes. Also take a look at the bass. We have C followed by A flat and then F. It moves in skips of thirds. The next chord is C major again, so the F kind of facilitates a plagal cadence feeling, which Prokofiev will use later. After a confirmation in C major, the main theme is repeated and Prokofiev changes the melody above the pedal passage to a rising one. He briefly moves into F major, starting with his B flat major chord here. But F major is never firmly established, instead he gives this chord, B, D, F and G sharp. And harmonically, the G sharp can be viewed as A flat. We thus have a diminished 7th chord on B. This is a dominant for the dominant C chord. We thus have a double dominant, but Prokofiev uses this chord to move directly back into the home key of C major. Then the second part of the A section starts, A2. In this section, the accompaniment follows a parallel chord progression, from tonic to the 7th scale degree. The main theme is repeated throughout, meandering in the different chords inherent in the C major scale. This section ends with two plagal cadences. The transition into the B section starts with an E note repeated in different registers. This common note becomes the root for the B section, which appears to be an E Phrygian. So E Phrygian is a church mode, constructed on white keys starting with E here. The characteristic interval of this mode is the second F natural, which is only a semitone above E. In E minor we usually have F sharp, a whole step above E. Prokofiev introduces an Alberti bass-like accompaniment and a new melody. Notice how he creates contrast with the A section by indicating every note to be played in staccato. 
There is not a single note in the A section with a staccato indication. Also notice how the left hand now gets the accompaniment instead, while the right hand plays the main melody. The melody is transposed and gets a tail here. This tail is repeated but preceded by this figure. This figure is familiar material, it has the same layout as the accompaniment in the A section. The melody continues its descent a third lower now than the original. The B1 section ends and we move into C major, albeit with E still playing a main role with the glissandi. E is held as a pedal, while the accompaniment moves in oblique motion. Also notice how this passage is mostly without staccato, except for the cadence features. This quirky passage is repeated, but now Prokofiev keeps insisting the glissandi on E, repeating them two more times. The last chord here, which is indicated staccato, includes C, A sharp and E. The C and A sharp form an augmented sixth interval that could move to B in the outer voices. But the score is never given and Prokofiev repeats the B1 section directly in E Phrygian. To make a smooth transition to the A section he uses the original accompaniment figure in a rising sequence above a G dominant chord. We're now back in the A section, but it's not A1, but the A2 part. He works his way back symmetrically to the A1 part, where we recognize the pedal passage and the inflection in E-flat. The coda is constructed on the pedal passage as a repeat, but in a slower tempo. The last interesting chord here is the D-flat major 7th chord in 2nd inversion. So we have D-flat, F-natural, A-flat and C. We could view this chord as a Neapolitan chord. Usually, in a classical context, we find this chord in the first inversion near the end of a composition or cadence. Therefore, it is commonly known as the Neapolitan sixth chord. Thus, for this example, it would occur with F in the bass, but Prokofiev gives instead A flat as a bass note. In major scales, one often lowers the fifth to obtain a perfect fifth with the bass. We see here that Prokofiev lowered the fifth A to A flat to have a perfect fifth in relation to D-flat. This chord usually prepares the dominant. In this case, Prokofiev gives the tonic directly, hinting yet again at the plagal cadence, perhaps. Well, thanks again for watching and please don't forget to subscribe and like if you appreciate the content. If you are looking for help with your compositions or harmony, please feel free to take a look at my Patreon page or contact me directly via my email.